of the ways that I think uh, it's it's uh, worthy mapping is certainly a good way to get started with being more purposeful. So. Uh, it's good to see we have some practitioners among us today. Uh, also glad to see we have novices. Um, what I'm going to do today is run us through maybe a more unorthodox approach to worthy mapping. Um, if you've gone out and read the book that's freely available online, uh, that's probably the more orthodox way of approaching the material. You get a bunch of theory and then you try to practice and see if it makes sense. Um, I tend to go the other way. I tend to throw people into the deep end and then help them with the specific things that they get stuck on. Uh, and so uh, if, if it feels like this is a weird or different way to learn worthy mapping, that's correct. It is. <laughs> so I appreciate your, your patience uh, playing with these concepts with me. And if at any point you get stuck or if you have any questions, um, interrupt, just unmute yourself, say, hey, wait a minute, um, or type something in chat. And... Uh, as I uh, typed in uh, chat before, if you ever need any answers to any questions or, or any uh, you know, way to talk to me later, you can email me at ben at hired thought, which I've posted in chat, or you can uh, find me on Twitter. Um, I am at hired thought on Twitter. Type that in there as well. Okay, so to get started, uh, I'm curious what you all think of whenever I say the word strategy. What, what does strategy mean to you? Does anyone feel uh, confident to put forth a proposal of what, what strategy means? Or at least what it means to you? A long-term plan, a high-level long-term plan. High-level long-term plan. I like that definition, that's good, yeah. I also like Sergey's definition, in most cases, BS, I agree. <laughs> Both of these things uh, I have seen, <laughs> I have witnessed. What else? What else comes to mind when you hear the word strategy? Any other thoughts? I know the introverts are spinning and they're, they're, they're afraid to share. I'm an introvert yeah. myself, I understand. Uh, I'm also an introvert. Uh, and well, something that comes to mind is how, how to prepare for for the future in yeah. in, a wide, in the wider sense because in, that may mean many different things and that's what it comes to mind just yeah that thought. yeah I, I think there's a lot of futuring that goes along with strategy it's like trying to bet on a particular future or trying to design a future um, there's a lot a lot there about where we are now and where we want to be or how we'd like things to be I see some more things in chat. Adrian says where to play and how to win. That's that's a great definition. That's definitely one that I've heard before that seems to work for a lot of people. Uh, David comes in with the, the Frank evaluation. Everybody says they're doing it and almost nobody is doing it right. I think, th I think there's some truth to that, yep. Uh, Jonathan says often when it's used, people are using it to mean short-term tactics. Yeah, I, I agree, there's, there's a, serious problem i think especially in the west where when we talk about strategy we're we're really talking about short term intent we're not talking about years long beliefs or intents about you know way things ways things could be i think we're talking quarter by quarter results which doesn't sound very much like strategy to me yeah and miguel talks about making decisions now and then thinking in the long term. I think I think there's an interesting kind of uh, dual kind of idea there. It's like we have to act today, but we also need to think about how to act towards some kind of future. Yeah, I like these definitions. This this really runs the full gamut of all the possible ways people could talk about strategy and think about strategy. And uh, I think there is no one perfect definition, but um, there are lots of different definitions that emphasize different aspects that I think have uh, important qualities to them. I think it's important to be on the lookout for BS and to make sure that we don't um, try to pretend that, you know, the, what people say is, is gonna be true necessarily. I think we, we need to have a critical eye for strategy. Um, I also think we should understand the where part of it uh, and what we do and how the future interacts and so on. But whenever you hear me say strategy, in the next, uh, let's say, 45 minutes or so, what I mean by, by strategy is doing things on purpose. 
that's it. Um, I don't think that's a superior strat uh, superior definition by any means. I just think it's a, a useful one to start with. So whenever I say strategy, I mean doing things on purpose. So my hope is, as we work together today, we're going to talk a little bit about how we do things on purpose, how we might do a better job of doing more things on purpose, and uh, removing ignorance from our organizations. So uh, we'll cover some ground today um, that we'll start with three ways to get strategy wrong. So three ways to not do a very good job at getting things, uh, doing things on purpose. We'll talk about why worldly mapping might be the thing to do to, instead. Um, so I'll try to make an argument for that. And then uh, I'm going to kind of run past my argument and I'm gonna say, uh, let's just test it out and let's see if you agree with me or not. And if you disagree, then you've learned something, uh, namely that you don't like worldly mapping and that's fine. Uh, but if you agree and you find it useful, then we'll uh, have kind of a starting path for you to, to dive into the material further. And for those of you who are already practitioners, uh, this might give you some ideas about how to share this method with others. Um, well, you might be able to steal some things from me here today. So, all right. Now, one final thing before we dive in. If you don't already have something to sketch with, um, we will be doing some sketching today. That'll be the, the trying it out part. So find, a, find some pencil and paper. Um, if you wanna write on an iPad, that's fine, or a remarkable, whatever. You, magical technology you have, um, we will be doing some sketching. So go ahead and grab some uh, materials if you need uh, before we get started. Okay, I've seen some people run away. <laughs> so I'll, I'll delay for them. Okay, Jose has got his pencil. Is that an Apple pencil? <laughs> a regular pencil? One of those. I don't know. There, there are a lot of uh, worthy mapping tools you'll find. I, I don't have the pie, the, the Apple pie. How, how was it? That? Uh, the Apple, Apple pineapple, Apple pineapple pie. What was that? Okay. No, I, I don't have it. I just have the, the pen. Oh, got it. Yeah, yeah. It was, a, it was a very bad joke. Sorry. Oh, no. You mean the, the pen pineapple apple pen? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That's good. Okay. Everybody's back. All right, good. Okay, let's dive in. Let's talk about three ways uh, to get strategy wrong, to, to do a bad job at doing things on purpose. All right. Has anyone here been to a bad meeting? Okay, got a couple hands raised. What's that like? What's, what are your bad meetings like? What's that experience like? Slow, Miguel says. No decisions. No oh, decisions, yeah, no oh, decisions, one of them, yeah. They, they sap your energy, Tristan says. Absolutely right. I feel drained after a bad meeting. The loudest person is the most ignorant and won't stop talking. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, or they, or they never create space for people who have a lot to contribute and uh, maybe don't have the confidence to always be loud. Yeah, so no, no, not creating space for other people to contribute. No agenda, yeah. No idea why we're here. Anybody ever attend a meeting and be like, why am I here? I don't know why I'm here. Why'd I get invited? <laughs> but you're afraid to leave because then, you know, people will think differently of you somehow. I've certainly been there. Yeah, no goal, no outcome. Yeah, I think, I think there are a lot of ways to have bad meetings. And uh, coincidentally, uh, I also think meetings are, are the amazing opportunity to start practicing better strategy, practicing better ways of doing things on purpose. Huge opportunity, run better meetings. All right, here's the first way to get strategy wrong. And you'll notice this happening in your meetings, bad communication. What do you think of when I say bad communication? What's that like? What's it like to communicate badly? No one talking, no one speaking up proactively. So no participation or participation is hard? No. Speaking in order to prove a point, not to learn and to listen. Ooh, yeah, we're gonna, I'm gonna get to that just in a second. Um, I see Olivier saying single direct, uh, single direction communication. 
Yep. That's going to tie into the, into your point as well. Talking about different things. Oh, you're for You both have foreshadowed me. <laughs> you stole my points. No, very good. No, that's, that's exactly right. So, so uh, starting with the first one, you know, talking at each other. So single direction communication, um, being the, the, the person who's talking at people, you know, and, and the role of listening then in those conversations are just waiting for my turn to talk. I'm not actually trying to hear what you're saying. I'm not trying to understand you. I'm just waiting until you're done talking so that I can start talking and tell you about what I need to say. So speaking is about expressing my needs. Listening is about waiting for my turn to talk. And uh, that's, not, that's not good communication. Okay. The second thing is talking past each other, which was also well spotted. So uh, talking past each other is not communication, right? When we listen, we're hearing the words people are saying, but we're not understanding them. And when we're speaking, we're, we're maybe feeling aligned, but we're not actually aligned. It's false consensus. False consensus. So talking past each other, we might come out of that meeting going, all right, we've decided to do things. So we have an action items list, but we don't actually understand each other. And we have false consensus. So these, these are, I think, two, two ways that I think we have bad communication. So, okay. That's the first way to get um, strategy wrong. First way to not do things on purpose, have bad communication. Okay, here's the next one. Blah, blah words, no meaning. What's a word that you keep hearing in your organization that doesn't have any meaning? Anyone? OKRs. OKRs. Digital transformation. I love that one. Yep. Yeah. Strategy. Ooh. <laughs> David's coming out with the knives. Leadership. Ow. <laughs> yeah. We. Yeah. Who's we, right? What do you mean by we? What do you mean by a lot? What do you mean by a few? What do you mean by nobody? Yeah. These are unspecific words. These are generic words and they, they just fill space. They don't actually communicate meaning. So actually, I guess this is another kind of bad communication. It's, it's unspecific. Doesn't mean anything. If I say technical debt or I say strategy or I say rollout or I say initiative or I say OKRs or whatever, it's just buzzwords. You're right. Miguel points out it's buzzword bingo. You could, you could take your bingo sheet to the next meeting and see who says what, and you'll find out that whenever we're playing buzzword bingo, we tend to play status games instead of meaning games. It's whoever can say the right combination of words that seems to be right, right? It's meaningless. Okay, that's the second way that we get strategy wrong. We can't do things on purpose if we can't communicate, and we can't do things on purpose if we're not specific, if we're using blah, blah words. Okay, third. Fighting uphill battles. So fighting uphill battles. So what do I mean by this? I mean, when we attempt to do things on purpose, we hide from our ignorance instead of seeking it out. And that means that we plan according to what we desire, what we hope is true, what we want to be true, instead of what's actually true. So we make plans based on our desires not our reality. So we hide from our ignorance. We believe things without checking on them, without being sure, without confirming. And so we plan and we build our plans on top of desires rather than truths. Okay. And the result, the conclusion of that, the impact of that is we make unforced errors. We hurt ourselves. You know, we, why are you hitting yourself? But for the corporate world, for the public sector world, for the government world, et cetera. And so if we're making unforced errors, then we're wasting a lot of time. We're wasting a lot of energy and we're missing the easy, obvious opportunities. And so what does strategy, the popular conception of strategy become when we're missing the obvious opportunities? 
and it's whoever can uh, make the fewest unforced errors. It's not strategy. It's not some sort of complicated game where, you know, people are trying to outsmart each other and things like that. No, it's just a game of whoever's least incompetent, whichever organization is the least incompetent. And I don't think that's fun. I don't think that's interesting. And I think we could do a lot better. So three ways that we uh, mess up strategy. One, we communicate poorly. Two, we don't have specific meaning with the words that we use. And three, we fight uphill battles instead of basing our moves on reality. We hide from our ignorance. We make unforced errors. Okay. Now here's the fun part, what to do instead. <laughs> and now I'm gonna, I'm gonna make an argument for worthy mapping. We haven't even talked about what worthy mapping is. We'll get into that in a second. Um, or actually, I'm gonna throw you into the deep end. <laughs> All right, so quick intro. Worthy mapping is provided by a gentleman by the name of Simon Wardley. He lives in the United Kingdom. He lives in a swamp. Uh, that's all you need to know. You can find him on Twitter. He is at Swardley. You can follow him on Twitter if you'd like. Uh, he has released this method of strategy uh, free. It's uh, provided Creative Commons attribution share alike, which means anyone can use it. Anyone can build on it. But uh, consultants cannot uh, abscond with it and sell, you, sell it to you for thousands and thousands of dollars. No, you, you, you can learn this on your own. You don't need consultants. And in fact, this method was designed as an anti-consulting framework. It's designed to build up competent business leadership, competent operational leadership, so that when the consultants come in, they help you by refining what you already know, rather than giving you a strategy and expecting you to just follow it. So it's about making your thinking better. So uh, if you wanna learn more, you can always go to learnwardlymapping.com. And if you wanna read Simon's free book, you can go to learnwardlymapping.com slash book. Boom, it's in the chat. All right, now I'm going to share my screen briefly and then we're gonna do some breakout groups. So here is a Wardley map. Oh goodness, that is a complicated looking diagram. Okay, I'm going to throw you into the deep end. And uh, let's see, Gerard, out of curiosity, are we able to do breakout groups? Is that something yes, that's- a... Yes, 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 we can do that, yes. Excellent, okay. So everyone here, uh, do me a favor. And uh, in a new browser tab, uh, go to lwm.events slash map. And I'll type this in the chat. Okay. And Gerard, while we're opening that up, could you- uh, How many people per group? Let's do like three people per group, two or three people. Or I okay, guess three wait. or four is probably better. Three to four people per group. Okay, let me create awesome. the 25 people. So let's create six. Excellent, okay. All right. Okay. Starting so once, right you've, now. once you've got uh, this map open, your job, is to answer this question. What can you learn from this map? So make okay, a yeah. list of things that you can learn from this map. Okay, I'm gonna open the rooms now. Okay, and we'll, but, we'll do this for about five minutes or so, and we'll come back in five minutes. Sound good? Yeah. All right, excellent. And Gerard, uh, in the meantime, uh, would you be able to add me as a co-host so I could switch between rooms? Oh, uh, if you tell me how to, how to do yeah, that. No, no worries, sorry, I'm springing this on you. Uh, in the participants window, there should be a little ellipsis, little dot, dot, dot next to my name. And if you uh, hit that and then uh, make co-host. Ah, in the participant, sorry, sorry, in the participant. All good, yeah. And for those of you who are might be still watching- Make, this, make host. Uh, make co-host, yep. Call, there is no call, there's host. Okay, I'll, host. I'll make you okay. host, yeah. Uh, well, I will, I will uh, we can bounce that back and forth then, doesn't yeah. matter, whatever you wanna do. Okay. Your host now. Okay, I'm gonna go through the rooms and just kind of check in on the conversations and make sure everyone's having a good time. 
Okay. And then I'll come back. And for those of you who are listening to the recording right now, um, the, the breakout rooms aren't going to be recorded, but run this exercise for yourself. So uh, lwm.event slash map. Try to make a list in the meantime of what kind of meaning you can get from this map, what you can learn from this map. All right. I'm going to go run through the rooms and see how people are doing. All right, folks are coming back now. Let's see. All right, so um, I'm just gonna pull this back up. Let's see here. All right. Let's see. There's the rest of everyone. Lovely. Okay. Looks like everybody's back. Yeah, so let's let's see. Um, what what can you learn from this map? What did some of uh, let's let's hear from a couple different groups. Um, starting maybe with with group one. I'm not sure if uh, if Gerard, if you can look at the the breakout groups list and let me know who was in that one. Group one: David, Jose Manuel, Keith, and Olivia. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. I think we um, we agree that uh, the citizen is the the main actor uh, because it's in, in the top of the of the uh, in the in the top of the map, and yep. the, the citizens want or, or need to stay informed, and for for that they use traditional news media and diff a number of media. Uh, the Excellent. Yeah. Media are in order to do the fact checking. They usually use uh, the TV, but the social and niche media they are using the websites. They um, they are based in, in the internet. I, I think that's something that we we can say that. Good. But yeah. It, so you're, you're having kind of like a description of a situation here. Yeah, exactly. And and you're able to use these words to describe what's happening. Great. Yeah. This is that's a great start. Let's see. Um, Someone from one of the other groups, what, what else can you learn from this map? Let's see. What else could you see? Well, we actually saw that, uh, you know, like you have like uh, different uh, medias in different uh, uh, phases of evolution. You know, you have niche in custom build because it's like super super specific then you have social media that is more common and then you have like traditional news media tv and also internet in like in a community or utilities like it's there is nothing special about that it's like everyone has it well spotted yeah that's that's exactly um there's there's kind of a progression happening here where things that are in the first stage um tend to be more uncertain more chaotic more unknown um, whereas things in the, in the fourth stage tend to be a lot more certain, a lot more boring, totally known. So th there's, a, there's a quality that is implied by the position of a component from left to right. Is it in stage one? Is it in stage four? Somewhere in between. Uh, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. Yeah, excellent. So yeah, just, just going from top to bottom, just all list some of these things out. I like the, the word actor. That's a, that's a good one. Um, another one we use is user. So this is the person or group of people getting value from the situation, from the system. Uh, the user has some kinds of needs uh, that are being met. Uh, so they're getting some kind of benefit or getting some sort of pain relieved um, that the system uh, is somehow meeting. So it's this system is somehow providing this need. It's adding up it's combining to fulfill this need for the citizen. And so what is the system is a good question. Um, and what we choose to add to the map is, uh, of course, um, part, of, part of our bias, the sort of the, the decisions that we make, what we're interested in and so on. So I have an interest in media. And so I've, I've made this map to talk about how media, different kinds of media uh, help citizens stay informed. And uh, some of the discussions that, I, that we had in our group were um, about how misinformed some media can be because fact-checking isn't as strong. 
And so we can have these discussions about specific parts of this system and how they do or don't do a good job of meeting the, the user need. And then uh, obviously we talked about position from left to right. So uh, the only other thing I'll mention is the relationships. These are needs relationships, dependencies. So citizens depend on staying informed, staying informed depends on media, different kinds of media depends on fact checking and so on and so forth down, down the row. And that system of parts and dependencies forms what we call the value chain. All right. So that's a little bit about mapping. So now- I have a quick question. Yeah, go ahead. Um, Last week I was struggling with a map I was doing and I was um, struggling with the, with the initial part. I was thinking, is there, is it possible, let's say, to, to do, to represent a hierarchy of needs? So kind of high level need, what does, how does need, how that need is fitted into several underlying needs, but still needs, not activities or components. Is that, is that? Yeah, I, I think the, the most important thing is not whether you're doing it the right way or the, mm. the exact way Wardley does it. I think the most important thing is that you are able to do it a way that makes sense to you. And so if you want to put one big need at the top and then a bunch of sub needs or dependent needs underneath, like it's, it's fine. It, it, it fits the form. Uh, mm. you, as okay. long as the concepts are meaningful to you and they help you have a uh, well, as long as they help you do what I'm about to say, which is th this helps with communication, right? Because instead of talking at each other or talking past each other, we are talking through a shared model. So I'm just gonna pull this image back up so you can, you can think about this as I, as I say this. So, so instead of talking at each other or past each other, we're talking through this shared model of a situation. And uh, in this case, the listening that we do is about hearing what we what each other is saying in order to understand. Oh, okay. So when you say media, you mean social media or you mean traditional media, right? And when I'm speaking, when any of us is speaking around the model or through the model, it's about clarifying. Well, what do you mean by that? Is that the way it is? Let's double check that. I want to understand this better, right? So those are the kinds of conversations you're having. And so it's clarifying, it's, it's negotiating. Like sometimes you're going to disagree about the way the world looks to you. And so there's a negotiation that must occur in order to resolve that conflict. And then as you negotiate, you start to design the system together. You design the way things ought to be. And that is communication. The second thing is, Instead of being unspecific, we're, we're not talking about blah. We're not talking about generic things. We're talking about specific things. It's not the information ecosystem. It's the information ecosystem with respect to what? With respect to fact checking, with respect to traditional news media. It's specific. And third, it's not about fighting uphill battles. It's about fighting downhill battles. We're gonna be able to see exactly how the system is working or not working, call that out. And we're gonna have this shared understanding of the situation. So we're not going to miss the obvious opportunities. And when there are non-obvious opportunities, special opportunities, unique opportunities, we'll be able to approach those opportunities with more nuance because we have higher uh, specificity. We're more specific about the system than the situation and we're communicating, we're actually communicating through this model. Okay, so let's, let's try this out. Let's do this for real. And this is where we need our paper. So everyone grab their, something to sketch with. And this is how we're gonna spend the last 15 minutes of our, of our time together. We're gonna actually do it. We're gonna, we're gonna make a map and then we're gonna find some opportunities on the map. So first things first, choose an opportunity that matters to you. This is, or choose a situation that, that matters to you. So this could be a problem that you're experiencing or a situation that you're dealing with. So I could, I could imagine choosing something like my family's pandemic safety. 
I could be thinking about the technical debt problem that I have in my organization. I could be thinking about marketing, whatever it is, it has to matter to you. That's the only criteria. Okay, once you've picked a situation, we're gonna make a list along the left-hand side. And at the top of the list, we're gonna put who is being served by that situation. Who's getting the benefits? Could be me, it could be a user, it could be a customer, it could be a government body. Who is getting value from the situation? Okay, so I'm making my list and uh, my situation is COVID-19 safety and my user are citizens. So that's what I've got. All right, anybody, anybody stuck so far? Everybody good? Okay, next, what benefit is this user trying to get in this situation? So in my case, I'm gonna put safety. My citizen needs safety. Yeah, sorry, go ahead, Jose. Sorry, Ben. Uh, yeah, what happens if I find more than one person that has, has, yes. is getting the better? Almost all situations will have many different users, many different needs. And what we're doing today is just picking one. We just wanna get started. So we'll, we'll just pick one. So I'd, I'd pick the one that's most interesting to you. Okay, thanks. But eventually you wanna understand them all, but that's for later. Okay, so uh, I've got my citizen. I think they need safety. So I'm gonna write that as the second item in my list. So citizen and safety. All right. Now for the hard part. I'm gonna expand this list and I want you to write at least three capabilities, three capabilities that come together to meet this need. So when I say capability, I mean things you can do, techniques you can leverage, knowledge that you have, Anything that you would consider a capability that would play a role in meeting this need. So, see so regardless, you... regardless if we have them or not. So maybe someone else's capability that we are trying to build. Okay. Yep. Yep. This okay. is just a, a pure model. What capabilities? So, okay. I've got three down. I'm going to give you a couple more seconds. Okay, give me a thumbs up when you've got at least three capabilities on your list. Thank you. Doesn't matter if you have the right ones down. Anybody stuck? Okay, we'll give you about 15 more seconds. Okay, so just showing you what I have so far. I've got my list along the left-hand side. I've got a user, I've got a need, and I've got three capabilities that I think are important to my situation. So my situation was COVID-19 safety. My user is the citizen. 
What need they have is safety. And the three capabilities that I think are important to that are mask wearing, social distancing, and vaccination. Those are the three things that are on my mind. There are many more. This is by no means a comprehensive list, but those are the three that I have in mind. Okay, so you've got your list, and now we're gonna do some sketching. So to the right of that, just want you to draw a right angle like this. This is gonna be our worthy map. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this list into a minimum viable worthy map. All right, once you've got the right angle, gonna draw three more lines, dividing the space above it evenly. And you can see I've done a terrible job of dividing it evenly, but that's okay. Maps are messy. So at the end, we want four sections, three equal lines across the, across the map. Okay. And then the final thing is to label each of the sections. Uh, one, two, three, and four. And that's for each of the stages of evolution. And I'm just gonna throw you into the deep end here shortly. So get ready. <laughs> All right. So once you've got this sketched out, um, anybody stuck? Anybody, have I left anyone behind? Okay, good. All right, we've got this. Now your job is to sort each of these capabilities into one of these four buckets. Now, first things first, we gotta put the user in the need at the top. So above, above the map, we're just gonna write the user, just like that. And for now, we're, we're not gonna worry about placing the need in the right place. We're just gonna put it above the map underneath the, the, the user. So user and the need, Okay, just like that. And now for the three capabilities that you identified, we're gonna put them in one of these four stages. Now, how are we gonna do that? Okay, well, guess what? This is gonna be a little messy, but it's gonna be okay. I'm gonna walk you through it. Has anyone screamed yet? Has anyone panicked? Okay, deep breaths. <sighs> All right, Here, here's what's going on. This is a lovely table that describes each of the four stages of evolution, okay? First thing, grab your own copy of this thing. Go to lwm.events slash evolution. Here, I'll type it in chat, lwm.events slash evolution. It's gonna be okay, I promise. Okay, once you've got your own version of this, of this uh, table, I only want you to pay attention to the blue rows, okay? Just the, just the blue rows. Okay, uh, my favorite is the, is the bottom most blue row, the one that says failure. Can everyone read that okay? Okay, failure, I love failure. Because guess what? In different stages of evolution, failure occurs differently. In stage one, failure happens all the time. It is high. In stage two, it's moderate, but unsurprising, disappointing. In stage three, it's not tolerated. We're trying to make things better constantly. And in stage four, failure is completely surprising. So I'm gonna give you two minutes of silence to just sort of sit with this big table <laughs> and, and just pick one, one thing that looks interesting, like failure, if, if that works for you, certainty is another good one. And try to sort your capabilities into one of these four stages. Hey, Ben, we yeah. don't need to care about the, that left axis. On your other one, it was visible, invisible. Do we need to care about how high or low these things are? Not this time, thankfully. Okay. So Great. yeah, we're, and just uh, in case you can see the thumbnail of, of me talking a little bit, you can see I've just thrown these in there anywhere. I've just thrown them in there. That's totally fine.
and give me a quick thumbs up once you've got your three capabilities sorted into these four buckets. Okay, we've got one person done. A couple more people finished. Is anybody completely lost or confused? That's a totally normal experience to have and I wanna help you. Okay, I'm gonna give you about 30 more seconds. And uh, at the end, if you're not done, just pick one of the four buckets. Doesn't matter if you're right. This is step zero on your journey to strategy. <laughs> you can always make it better. Ben, I understand that the capability is put in, 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 in each uh, stage and depending on um, how, um, how good am I, am I in order to provide the, the, the need, not how it is perceived by the user. What you're, let's, let's save that for a conversation in a moment. Okay. Um, that, is, that is one of the tricky parts of this. Is, is it how things are currently for us or is it how the rest of the world is? Exactly. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, we'll call it back in a second. Okay. All right. So uh, great job, everyone. You, you've officially made your first Wardley map. Congratulate yourselves. It's not perfect. It's, it's probably really ugly. You can see how ugly mine is. That's okay. All right. But it's the first one. We can always make it better. Okay. What do we do now? And I recognize we have three minutes left. And so I promise you, we're going to use the most out of those three minutes. All right, here we go. Ready? Boom. All right. We're going to do some thinking. For each of the parts of this map, spend some time with this table and examine the prompt on the right. So to Jose's point, reduce bias is the first one. I'm going to look at my capabilities. I've got mask wearing. Okay. I've got mask wearing at stage two. I'm gonna read this prompt. Are we treating this capability differently than the rest of the world? Well, I think the rest of the world, especially China, has mask wearing probably in stage four. In the US, ugh, you're lucky if you have it in stage two. Okay, so there's an opportunity here to reduce bias. So I found one. All right, so now take the next two minutes and walk through the rest of this table you don't have to get through them all, but for each capability on your minimum viable worthy map, see if there are obvious opportunities. Okay, so it is the end of our time together. However, I'm going to stick around for as long as uh, uh, Gerard will let me. <laughs> um, if you need to leave, one thing I'll put here is in the chat, a link to that table of the opportunities. And if you have questions, uh, let's lay them on me. I'd be happy to, uh, to walk us through any of this stuff. So. Well, thank you. Maybe we can at, at least, um, if you are happy to do that, 15 minutes so people can yeah. ask us questions about their, their minimum viable worldly map. I have Absolutely. some questions, but I will let people go first, uh, the rest of people, so. Yeah. Yeah, so thanks for coming everyone. And, and out of curiosity, wh what sort of opportunities did you find? sort of questions came up. Sky, you look like you were about to talk before I interrupted you there. <laughs> no, I, I was just amazed at the questions that you answered and how obvious it was as soon as I asked myself the question. I was like, yep, 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 there it is. There's the opportunity. <laughs> like, and I don't have to like it and I don't have to have it want to be the way that I wish that it was. The fact is, there is a way that it is, and I'm missing an opportunity because I am trying to like ignore it. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Thanks for coming, Sky. And just to just to add a little bit of kindness and, and empathy that that maybe I haven't been uh, so so forthright with at the moment. It's only obvious 
because Wardley has now made it apparent to us. <laughs> so like, and, and maybe he's got it wrong too, right? Like it, he doesn't have all the answers either. He's just another human on the world and he lives in a swamp. So, I mean, <laughs> how much can he know? <laughs> but maybe, maybe uh, there are some things that he has to share for it with us. And, and maybe that makes some of these things obvious to us. I appreciate clarity at whatever cost. <laughs> Gotta find answers, right? Yeah. Any questions about this? Any any weird or frustrating experiences while while going through this? Anybody find this really hard? Yeah. Usually, one one of the questions that usually happen struggle with the most is uh, a little bit. I would probably like to ask again, or or if you can provide more insight into the same question that Jose asked. So whenever I'm mapping. I'm always thinking, is it, must I represent my level of understanding of, of or the way I do this? Or um, imagine I'm, I'm, I'm mapping my industry and I compare myself to possible competitors. Should I map their, their state of the art, my state of the art, both uh, arrows up and down showing movement? I, I really get always stuck and, and waste a lot, well, waste, invest a lot of time myself thinking or what to place the, 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 the stuff there. Yeah, yeah I, I think that's a, a really hard problem. And um, oftentimes, you know, you know how we have the, the concept in tech of technical debt? It's like the, the, we know that things could be a certain way, but the system has been in existence for years, right? Years and years and years. And we made decisions back then that uh, made sense at the time, but now they are holding us back and preventing us from from using the the latest and greatest, uh, the mm -hmm. doing the obvious thing that you know uh, any organization that was starting from scratch would just go do. Um, and I think we have the same problem with knowledge, uh, with knowledge of our organizations and the decisions that we make. Um, I think a lot of times the accidental kind of way that we make decisions without intentionally kind of considering all angles and making a high quality intentional decision for every important opportunity, I think you end up with uh, kind of a cascading, like a scaffolding full of um, like bad decisions built on top of bad decisions. And so then when you finally start doing something like worthy mapping, it doesn't matter if it's worthy mapping, or any reflective practice where you're examining the decisions you make closely, mm -hmm. you have that moment where you go, oh no, there's so much that we don't understand. And so the hard part is building an intuition about where to invest your time and attention. Should you invest your time and attention in comparing yourself to your competitors? It depends. Should you invest your time and attention in just understanding how things currently are working? And I think this is where the transition part comes in. When you map, you are doing design. You are either designing the model itself in order to make reality more accessible, or you're designing the way you would like things to be, or you're doing a compare and contrast between the way you would like things to be versus the way things are currently. And so there's this, this kind of tension there, but how do you navigate that difference between the present and the future? And I think that is why having highly specific descriptions of where you want change to occur that's where that's valuable. So I, of course, go super intense. I map the way things are uh, in my world. And then I go out and I map the way things are in the broader world. And sometimes they don't look at all alike, truthfully. And so then there's a hard question. Do I build from where I am now or do I abandon some of the old things that I did? Uh, one, of the, one of the prompts in the table was, uh, refactoring liability or disposing of it, right? Do I have what it takes to overcome the inertial, uh, the internal resistance to, to disposing of that liability? That's hard, hard questions, right? Nobody likes to, to end projects. Yeah, I see Jonathan has a question. Uh, how do you decide where to put the first need of the user? Isn't that individual to each user? I think that's a really good question. Uh, and, and thanks for coming, everyone else who has to leave at the moment. Um, it was good to have you here. So Jonathan, that, that's a great question. Um, and I think that has to do with uh, how specific 
um, your model can be. So um, let's say on this call, Jonathan, you have some needs and I have some needs, right? Um, my needs are gonna be different than yours because my role is different and the way I'm approaching this call is different than the way you're approaching it. And to a certain extent, those are gonna look very different if we look at them closely. But if we zoom out and we look at this is just a call and the only thing that we're concerned about is the quality of our ability to hear each other and to communicate to e with each other, maybe we have a common need there. Maybe we both have a need to be seen and heard. And to what extent is that specific enough? I don't know. Like maybe it's not specific enough. Maybe we need to, to zoom in and look closely and say, oh, Jonathan needs to have a good experience on this call. He needs to hear something about worthy mapping, figure out if it's for him so he can move on with his life and decide whether to learn more about it or, <laughs> or to practice it more or whatever. Meanwhile, Ben needs to test some new worldly mapping material that nobody has ever seen before. <laughs> That's what's happening today, by the way. <laughs> so depending on how you all react, I'm going to tweak the material for the next thing that I'm giving next week, right? So our needs are different, but it depends on whether they're meaningfully different. And I think that is only something that you can decide in your map. So I don't know, did that answer the question, Jonathan? I sure, I sure talk a um, lot. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot for the answer. And actually that point came up with uh, my microphone not working so well in the breakout session. <laughs> it's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yeah. If, if, the, if the, the things farther down the value chain, right? The, the important dependencies that are down there that are gonna support us in being heard and seen, if those don't work, the whole thing collapses. And that's part of what we're doing, yeah. Part of what we're dealing with. Yeah, so what other questions do people have? I'll settle for comments too. <laughs> Some more minutes left. One question. Yeah, all right. There's a lot that uh, I think this opens up. Uh, and what I would suggest as you play with this technique further, suspend self-criticism around whether or not you're doing it right. Doing it wrong is okay. Because it doesn't matter how wrong you are. If you do it once, you create a baseline to make it better. If you do it once, it means the second time that you do it, well, we'll be able to be compared with the first and you'll be able to make it better between those two. And it's not all or nothing. It's not doing worthy mapping perfectly and mapping all of the systems. It's just doing one map, understanding things a little bit better. And then tomorrow, doing it again, making things just a little bit better, but it's like tiny little steps. And it's that process over years. This is a decades long kind of thing that you can do. It's that process over years that adds up and starts to have compounding effects. And before you know it, you will make better decisions intuitively just because you know how things work, just because you are sensitized to the conditions that are in play. So. But, um, uh, yeah, well, thank you. Uh, I think that there are no more questions. Um, I really, really appreciate your time, Ben. Today is an important day in the USA. So thank you. <laughs> well, I, I, I'm, and at the, uh, yes. for the rest of the world uh, also. So thank you very much for being here today with us. Thank you for sharing. And, uh, and uh, thank you everybody else also for joining and for being part of the community. We have another event in two weeks time, I think, two weeks time, yeah. So more learning is coming up. Cool, uh, any final words then you want to say? Uh, there's one question from Pavel about an example of a, oh. a toxic system. And I would say it's anything that you really shouldn't have in your organization. So for example, if you own a data center right now and you're not the best in class at managing it, that might be an example of a toxic capability. Uh, if you have a legacy system that is built around assumptions that were appropriate 20 years ago, but not appropriate today, that's another example of a toxic capability. So yeah. 
Excellent. Thank you all for being here. I, I'm so glad I'm so glad you came. If you have any questions at all, I love talking to people. So find me at Hired Thought on Twitter. If you want to email me, you can email me ben at hiredthought.com. And if you want to learn more, you can go to learnworthymapping.com. Sorry, I know I'm typing loudly here. It's because I'm typing this up in chat. So at hired thought, ben at hiredthought.com and learnworthymapping.com. I'd love to hear cool. from you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, thank you very much. Bye-bye. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. Thank you, everybody. Bye.